Welcome, welcome back to this week in showdown. You got me tonight just by myself, riding solo. No no Jeff, no Matt, but don't worry guys. I will do it the best I can, uh, probably fast and annoyingly as possible, as always. Uh, as always, brought to you by the Showdown Card Bot. Matt Gula does a great job at the showdownbot.com. Um, and actually, now he's been helping produce the cards themselves uh, as part of creating his um, backlog of images for the for the year. And I can tell you, these cards this week look ridiculous. So, starting off, we have Mr. Starling Marte. He, in the past week, had a home run, four RBIs, two stolen bases, and five runs with 500. And this card is beautiful looking. Uh, nine on base. Multiple positions in the outfield, 310 points. This card actually does feel like a really good deal. 5-9 um, walk, not too bad. 1-4 through four strike on him, it's whatever. But I wish he had a little bit more on the back end. Like maybe like a 14-17 through 17 single plus is not bad. So if you think about that, maybe he's getting on second at a 14 base B speed. So we do plus 3 for a uh, single plus, not an automatic steal. So... Uh, yeah, that's at 18 speed, then stealing second. It's not too bad, but I just love the way this card looks. It just pops off the page so nice. And he had a good week. He's got 389 on base for the season, seven home runs, 19 stolen bases. So maybe he can jump to an A speed. That'd be really good. But for now, I think this card's really draftable and really, really fun. Uh, going down just a little bit, then with 280 points, is Tommy Pham. And this card really jumps off the page. And if you remember last week's conversation, we are talking about jerseys. This is a jersey that I actually like that the San Diego Padres wear. And this is the jersey I would get. This one's really sharp. I think the pinstripes with a little bit of like the gray brown is, is really sharp. He had a home run this week. Three RBIs, a stolen base, eight runs. Has 733 on base this week. He's been tearing it up right now. But he got up to 382 on base for the year. He's got 13 stolen bases. So we're looking at a very similar card than the one previously. A little bit less positions. Um... A little bit more on the walk end and a lot less single pluses. So you probably might be leaning towards um, Starling Marte, definitely in this case. Uh, but, you, you know, 30-point savings, is that this this card isn't going to hurt you either. And I think this card obviously just looks phenomenal. Tiny Fam actually just looks good, so maybe that's just him. Um, Willie Adams coming in uh, next with a big shortstop plus four. 290 points for an eight with a little bit of pop, 15 double. One through five out kind of stinks and six through ten walk. But he had seven RBIs this week, two homers, with 688 on base for the week, had six runs. So he's been really lights. He's been doing crazy as as well. But the shortstop plus four is really nice as well. So this card overall just looks great and not going to hurt you. And, I mean, geez, these first three cards are all super draftable and very fun uh, and, like, almost all new people. Um, now, I think Juan Soto has been up. I'm not exactly positive. So this is a weird card. <laughs> um, he had three home runs this week, six RBIs, seven hits, 600 on base. He's just an on base machine. He's been on base at 415 the year. Juan Soto, as everyone knows, is my, my boy. I love him. I think he's the best player in baseball right now, besides maybe Mike Trout. Um, but if I had to start a new team with a new young player, I'd want Juan Soto. Um, the card looks phenomenal. He's a beast. But man, this 5 through 12 walk range and 13 through 18 single range is really killing me. And I feel like that's why, obviously, his points are so low for 340 for a 10. But, you know, it's rough. You know, he's only got 14 home runs in the year. I just want some of those singles to be doubles. He's only got 10 doubles. I don't know, only, but 10 doubles. I just really want some more extra base hits. Going through, eight, I feel like you're going to get the advantage a lot with this guy. And then you're going to end up on, like, rolling 1 through 18. And then you're going to be really pissed off that it's not working out in your favor. And I feel like this card's going to end up hurting a lot more. I feel like I'd rather have like the uh, the Max Muncy card that we were looking at before. Um, but yeah, it's not the best card. Of all the cards, it's funny that the 10 on base is the one I least like of all of them. Um, I just don't think it's worth it chart-wise. Though, you know, if I get a 10 for 340, I guess I'm not too, too upset. Um, next up. We have Jordan Alvarez, the worst player of the week. He went 0 for 11, nothing to just a bunch of freaking strikeouts. Um, had a pretty rough week. I know tonight, uh, as I'm recording this, he just did a home run. So a little bit of, uh, you know, serendipity, I guess. Uh, but uh, 350 on base, so he's got the 8 and a ton of power. So this is what we're talking about now. We got the, the low walk, but a high single range here, 8 through 14, 15 doubles, 17 home run. C-speed, 
but he's got 16 probably 15 home runs at the time i'm not really sure when, when this gets recorded or when the stats get recorded but he's gonna be a power monster but imagine you know if he didn't kill himself this week i guess i probably say it like that but he didn't kill didn't poop out this week he'd have been a lot better off um Switching over now to the pitchers, Carlos Rodon looking like an absolute freaking monster. And I, is it just me or is every freaking pitcher like 600 plus points and an absolute beast? So it's going to be really hard if you're drafting this set to like get any production, uh, I feel. So we got a five uh, tier two, five through seven, one through 17 out pitcher with no doubles. Just just a monster of a card. Uh, I, I, I There's no downside, obviously. And. He's absolutely crushing it. A ton, two big star runs. So maybe you want more ground brawls, but geez, the least gets six IP as well. He only had one start last last week. He got the win, 10 strikeouts, only one hit, no one runs. He's at 2-1-4 ERA, a .9 whip on the season, 140 strikeouts in 96 innings. I mean, he's just, just killing it. This card's freaking ridiculous. And then, oh, another 600-point Tier 2 pitcher. This one's more a little bit interesting because he's got one less walk, and so he's got the one more single. And so you, you end up getting about 40 points more for the other card, which is interesting. Um, and then more ground balls for Corbin. So I, I almost rather have Corbin probably. Though, man, I don't know. That single's kind of hurt too. So anyway, he he had uh, eight eight innings this week. 8.1, no one runs, 12 Ks. He's got 2.16 ERA for the year, 0.9 whip. Basically the exact same guy that uh, 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 Carlos Rodon is. Uh, speaking of Carlos Rodon, another White Sox, Lucas Giolito. Oh, under 600 points. Uh, tier tier, uh, tier uh, 2. Oh, this is Tier 2. Sorry, those guys are Tier 1. This guy's a Tier 2 uh, pitcher and uh, got the 4-1 through 17, which you would absolutely you know, grab every time because absolutely that's a must and a monster of a card. Um, but a uh, little bit less than there, guys. He's got a 3-9 ERA for the season, 1.1 whip. He left an earn run in his last inning. He threw a complete game against the Houston Astros, 9 IP, and got the win. So that was great for him. Uh, but again, pretty good. I mean, these three pitchers are all great on everyone's team. Is even a start, uh, number one. And then uh, Pete Fairbanks uh, coming in for, we got a little bit of reliever action. We got a 200-point tier three reliever with no doubles, but only one single as well. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, I don't know if I like 200 points for a control three. I don't know if I'd pick him up, but um, he had two saves this week, two strikeouts and two innings, no earned runs. Got 3.81 ERA for the for this year, 1.3 whip, 3.8 whip. So I don't know. I, I, six one half dozen another. I I don't really like that that, but I know the 01, which is the stats we're using for this, are a little higher, and so a lot of people probably think this actually maybe is valuable. But I st- I still don't know. Now, worst player of the week, Tejon Walker. He got absolutely annihilated. And if anybody watched that John Boy clip, <laughs> he like was going for that like little swinging bunt, and he thought it was foul, so he's grabbing as quick as possible. But the ump called it fair. He throws the ball like almost away, and like all the runners score. He got five earned runs and in point one innings, it's 135 ERA for the for the week. He had four walks. Uh, which really ballooned his stuff. I mean, he's got like 90 strikeouts and 90 innings and a 2.99 ERA with a 1.12 whip. So this card is actually really good in general because he's a tier two pitcher, but uh, only five IP. But I think he's going to continue to go down for the rest of the year. I, I don't see him him turning it around. I know he's had a good year, but I think this is the best right now you're going to see him, and it's going to continually go down. Uh, which sucks because I always I always should kind of like Tejon Walker, but man, he got lit up in his last last outing. Again, 500 points. It's just it's, the pitchers are so expensive, but you know I get it. That's kind of that's kind of what it is these days, especially with these with some of the 01 guys. So you know, do the best you can in drafting, and let me know what cards this week you would be drafting, and you know, stay tuned for week 16 next.